Am I loud enough? Everybody, please tell me. Eman, am I loud, loud enough? Okay, okay, awesome. Awesome, okay, thank you, everybody. All right, everybody, let's start. Uh, today, we are going to start up uh, sympathomimetic drugs, okay? And um, I want to ensure that uh, you all are studying these days because I think we all are on the verge that the lockdown is about to get over and we all are about to join university physically. And um, I am also uh, giving some exams and um, uh, I just got the cheat yesterday and I was surprised to know because I was thinking maybe uh, this year, the particular badge in which I am, they would pass me without taking any exams because we were already submitting pieces and everything. But uh, no, we had an exam. Okay, so when I have an exam, so definitely you would also have an exam. Uh, probably by September you would have it. Keep in mind, as of on 1st September you have an exam. Okay, so by keeping that date in mind, plan your uh, preparation and everything. Okay, and start preparing right now, all right? As if you're having exam on the 1st of September, okay? Because as soon as the date sheet would be announced, so you don't have that option to say that we were not told, okay? So please start your preparation right away, all right? Okay, um, so starting up with this class of drug, uh, before I, the, uh, you know, talk about sympathomimetic drugs. I assume that you all did not go to neurotransmitter lecture. I don't know why I, my gut feeling told me that. You all did not. So, so I tried to uh, reinforce the that particular lecture to you guys. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Starting with catecholamine, we discussed in our previous lecture when we were uh, discussing the chapter of neurotransmitters that in catecholamine we have dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Then we discussed why do we call it catecholamine. We call it catecholamine because it has catecholamine and ethylamine. If you remember, I told you all that catecholamine is actually a benzene ring having two hydroxyl groups attached. Now, guys, just think, if it has two hydroxyl groups attached, okay, so what it would be? Would it be polar or non-polar? It would definitely be polar in nature because it has hydroxyl groups attached. And ethylamine side chain is already there, okay? All right. Then we talked about that how exactly uh, these work, the receptors and everything. So we talked that adrenal, in the adrenal medulla, there is uh, chromosome cells which are activated and as a result, catecholamines are produced. And then we talked that epinephrine are secreted 80% and norepinephrine are secreted 20% overall. And then they act on alpha and beta receptors in order to increase cardiac output, increase blood pressure, uh, dilate pupil, increase blood flow, and increase blood sugar. How exactly blood sugar would happen? If you remember in my previous lecture, I said increase lipolysis, okay? So when obviously lipids would be uh, uh, degenerated, so uh, they would be broken up. So obviously, at that moment, glucose would be produced, energy would be produced, right? Similarly, glycogenolysis is also there, all right? In which the glycogen is broken down and then sugar molecules are being available in the blood. So that, because you see, here we're talking about sympathomimetics, okay? Uh, and here I'm talking about sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, right? And it is involved when we are in a situation of fight and fright. 
and we are when we are in a situation of fight and fright so you see my body needs energy okay so in order to give me energy the blood sugar is being available okay towards the skeletal muscles of course the blood flow would increase okay and my pupils would dilate and the blood pressure would increase right everybody okay then we discussed the difference i'm sure by looking at the pictures you all can see uh, a clear cut difference that noradrenaline which is secreted 20% okay it is associated with vasoconstriction okay however when we talk about adrenaline okay so here and or, or in other words you can call it epinephrine and noradrenaline okay so adrenaline what it does it increases heart rate relaxation of breathing tubes okay increases um, in blood pressure by vasoconstriction increase of blood sugar levels okay so these are the effects they are producing then this is a very 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 important slide for today okay why because now when i'll talk about sympathomimetic drug so i would be telling you that here and there it is acting and then the effects have been produced so please listen to uh, listen to this slide very carefully and uh, try to grab as much of the uh, topic as you can from it okay great okay so let's start okay so you see first of all tyrosine gets into the neuron okay previously also we talked about it that tyrosine gets into the neuron by the sodium pump channel okay and then um, the energy is being used up all right tyrosine gets into the neuron here it's being converted into dopa and then that's converted into dopamine which is converted in uh, which is then dopamine is then um, uh, stored in the vesicle okay and then it is released if you look over here on this very corner of the slide you would uh, first of all you see over here this is phenylalanine okay and if you compare this structure with this structure so you would see that on phenylalanine if you attach one oh group so tyrosine would be produced okay and then it is being converted into dopa by the action of tyrosine hydroxylase by hydroxylase means hydroxyl group is attached so you see one more hydroxyl group is attached then we are talking about dopa decarboxylase d means out carboxylase means carbon is getting out so you see here carbon dioxide is kicked out and then this nh to this carboxyl group left and then this hydrogen got attached here okay so it became dopamine okay it means dopamine has catechol ring when i say it has hydroxyl it means dopamine is polar in nature if you try to recall the very first few lectures which i took in the university particularly you would recall that we talked that lipophilic drugs are more easily um, uh, uh, you know they produce their response their they produce their effect in the body however the polar drugs they do not produce effect that much uh, easily they need to get through the channels and they need assistance in order to get enter into the body and to produce its effect in everything right um uh, would it cross the uh, blood brain barrier very easily would it cross the cell membranes very easily no it won't why it won't because this is polar and we talked about that lipophilic drugs can easily pass through can easily go through however lip hydrophilic drugs just cannot right so this compound dopamine is hydrophilic in nature okay then is dopamine beta hydroxylase 
it means that here on carbon one hydroxide is attached and then on dopamine if just one hydroxyl is attached it gets converted into noradrenaline okay then it uh wait then over here this noradrenaline okay Okay, so if we have noradrenaline, okay, which has one hydroxyl attached to it, if we add on this chain one methyl group, so it will become adrenaline. And you see, one methyl group is adding up, so we would say methyl transferase. Okay, so phenyl, ethanolamine, and methyl transferase enzyme is there, and then it will become adrenaline. So you see all of this action. Now you would say that this is dopamine, this is not adrenaline. So, and if dopamine is being secreted, so where exactly is norepinephrine, right? So you see this norepinephrine in the, within the vesicle, it would be converted from dopamine into norepinephrine and then it would be secreted. Yeah? Okay. Then if you look over here, um, the other enzyme is not mentioned here, but there are two enzymes. One is monoamine oxidase and the other one is COMT. COMT is outside and monoamine oxidase is here. And then monoamine oxidase degenerates dopamine within the neuron and this COMT degenerates dopamine in the synaptic lift. Okay. Um, you see, the thing is, if I want to have maximum response, okay, it means that I want to have maximum drug here, right? Now, just imagine, I want, I, I want to do um, sympathomimetic action. Sympathomimetic means sympathetic, uh, sympathetic nervous system is being mimicked, is being uh, hyperactivated. Okay, and now when it's getting hyperactivated, just imagine this dopamine transporter, here the dopamine is getting reuptaken, right? It means it is diminishing the number of neurotransmitter within the synaptic cleft. So I can do this, that I block it up, and I increase concentration of dopamine here, right? So it will be sympathomimetic. Similarly, I inhibit this. I stop monomine oxidase inhibitor to work. No, sorry, I stop this monomine oxidase. And then, and then uh, what would happen? This degeneration of dopamine into dopax would be gone. Similarly, this COMT inhibitor, for example, if I do, um, I give any medicine which inhibits Comped. So what would happen? Within the synaptic cleft, the dopamine will not be degenerated, right? So you see, I have multiple ways, multiple indirect ways also to enhance. One direct way could be what? One direct way could be that I enhance secretion over here. And these are all indirect ways which we talked even before. Okay? All right. Then we talked about dopamine and then you see, we talked that this dopamine would be converted into dopac by the action of monoamine, monoamine oxidase. Okay, what is dopac? 3,4-dihydroxyphenyl acetic acid. Okay, and this comp is catechol or methyl transferase. Okay, and it, it can convert this dopamine into uh, 3-methoxytriamine, all right? And then, as a result, subsequently, if you um, degenerate both of these compounds, furthermore, so they will be converted into HVA. And what is HVA? It is homovanilic acid. These are literally the basics of pharmacology. If you remember, if you try to remember these, your uh, pharmacology would be the most favorite subject. So please try to learn these basics. Okay. 
action of uh, tyrosine hydroxylate uh, is the this one the first one okay this is the rate limiting step definitely if this will not be uh, like more and more transfer would not be there so the subsequent um, reaction will not happen right so the main termination of action for the monoamine is presynaptic reuptake which we have just discussed monoamine oxidase b pumped is there these are two enzymes which of course degenerate the dopamine so this is what i wanted you to revise okay coming up here so uh just right now we have discussed that catecholamines are there and then non catecholamines are there now what is this catecholamine and what is this non catecholamine you see this you can always bifurcate the medicines the drugs the sympathomimetic drugs into catecholamines and non catecholamines what would be catecholamines which have catechol ring and what would be non catecholamine of course which don't have catechol ring right okay great oh all right right okay so you see a uh, catecholamine let's read the general properties okay they have catechol ring of course they are water soluble yes not effective orally why not because they would be degenerated by the enzymes in the liver they would be biotransformed they would be then excreted by kidney it means they would have a very 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 short half life right so you see poor penetration into cns why because we talked that hydrophilic drugs have poor penetration within the cns as they fail to or they have hurdle in crossing the blood brain barrier however when we talk about lipophilic drugs they are easily penetrable right okay then is catecholamines are inactivated by pont and monoamine uh, monoamine oxidase mgid short half life for example adrenaline noradrenaline dopamine isoprenaline right look here guys i want you to please take note of these drugs whenever these drugs dobutamine dopamine iso uh, proterenol epinephrine norepinephrine will come you would say that all of these properties are the properties of these drugs okay it means they would have a short life and everything which we have just discussed now let's read what would be the characteristics of non catecholamine they lack catechol ring yes we can see that they don't have okay lipid soluble yes effective orally yes cross well uh, blood brain barrier prominent cns effect not inactivated by comp in the pool long half life and its examples are ephedrine amphetamine phenylephrine see here i want you to memorize names of these drugs non catecholamine so that whenever somebody ask you what are the basic functions what are the basic characteristics you would just say these uh these properties quickly okay all right now uh we have previously discussed in my previous lecture also all of this classification and today we are going to discuss it again uh when we talk about adrenergic drugs ad adrenergic agonists then we have three sub categories we have direct acting we have mixed we have indirect acting first let's talk about indirect acting in indirect acting i have releasing agent uptake inhibitor 
monoamino uh, uh, monooxidase amine inhibitor comes inhibitor so guys i want you to memorize names of these drugs that comes inhibitor what is this this is entacapone monoamine oxidase inhibitor very famous drug this is flagellin uptake inhibitor cocaine releasing agent amphetamine tyramine now just think about it that i am giving for example i have to give a drug to a person among these okay i have to for example i don't have a choice okay i have to give catecol amine nature drug to a person and my reservation is this that it is inactivated by comed and monoamino oxidase inhibitor in git right so what her, what if i uh, give both of these medicines along with the uh, main medicine it would save my drug from getting degenerated very quickly right so this is like indirectly acting okay or maybe you got to know that you did the scanning and everything and then you got to know that this dopamine is getting diminished in the body of a person because monoamine oxidase is there more in more quantity or comes is in more amount so you give this medicine and the person is okay no time okay all right then is mixed acting in mixed acting we have ephedrine okay and in direct acting we have two categories which is selective and non selective um when i say selective it means that the drug would hit the target only if you remember in my last uh, in the second last lecture i discussed this drug clonidine so um, and there was a whole slide that how is that it acting where is acting and everything okay all right so here you see phenyl ephrin is acting on alpha 1 clonidine is acting on alpha 2 beta 1 is acting beta 1 is affected by dobutamine beta 2 is affected by terbutaline okay so it means you have to write this classification and stick it on your wall okay now non selective drugs non selective drugs are oxymetazoline isoproterenol epinephrine norepinephrine okay um actually i would tell you one thing that uh, since we are pharmacists all right so if you try to uh, memorize this classification and you keep on revising it for the next 4 to 5 years of your life it will be benef very beneficial for you because sometimes in the interview also of uh, different industries we are asked what is the classification or um, and even for a competent exam it is very beneficial hmm. all right so i gave one task to you guys and that was to add fun to pharmacology to make it fun and to make it look interesting i would even erase the marks from it okay and then i would think maybe i would give grace marks to the person who would uh, you know uh, submit this kind of a project uh, the main intention is this that you guys would revise pharmacology and you guys would think and try to put it into illustration or maybe into poetry or maybe into a song um you see three to four people join in together create a song highly appreciable maybe if we would like the song so much so maybe uh, we would think about publishing it somewhere right or maybe just airing it somewhere so let's see it depends on the quality of the work that you do okay so uh, please don't do this that you leave everything aside and then you start doing it okay don't do that uh, your exams are very very close so stay focused but in your free time if you have um, free time so you can always open up your pharmacology book and then try to make up a song or some illustration some picture so that uh, we can exhibit it somewhere okay so try to do that i would uh, make the assignment ungraded okay but i would definitely give the grace marks to the person who would submit uh, creative work okay 
all right so this is a few examples okay um, that um, th these are the pictures which summarize the action of alpha 1 and alpha 2 and beta receptors okay so you can always make something more creative okay more creative than this person okay now epinephrine and norepinephrine we have already talked but uh, let's talk now in more depth are poorly absorbed from the gi tract we know why do not enter the cns to an appreciable extent extent absorption of epinephrine from subcutaneous side is slow because of local vasoconstriction nebulize and inhaled solutions and topical preparation of epinephrine are available epinephrine and norepinephrine are most often administered iv with caution to avoid cardiac arrhythmias or local tissue necrosis now just imagine a drug which we know it won't even survive for a longer time why would we give when we have some other alternatives which are more sustained right okay so um, again it is poorly absorbed do not enter the cns mm, i think i did not oh no okay i even i'm running out of time but it's okay wait a minute okay after this drug and the other uh, like norepinephrine i would end this uh, class okay and then uh, i would restart it so that you all can join and we would buy more time okay all right <clears throat> now these drugs are metabolized extensively by enzymes in the liver by comt and monoamine oxid uh, uh, oxidase metabolites are eliminated by the kidney epinephrine and norepinephrine action at neuroaffected junctions are terminated primarily by simple diffusion away from the receptor site and by active uptake into sympathetic nerve terminals and subsequent active transport into storage vesicles actions are also partially terminated at neuroaffected junction by metabolism by extra neuronal comt and intra neuronal monoamine oxidase now what does that mean what is extra neuronal form what is intra neuronal monoamine oxidase this is no difficult terms you see extra means outside it means outside the neuron the comt is there which would kill the compound and intra intra means within neuronal means within the neuron right intra neuron within the neuron so within the neuron this monoamine oxidase is there which would metabolize it right everybody so this is no difficult terms that you are studying right now so you see they're saying simple thing they're saying that the receptor is there for example here i have a receptor alpha 1 alpha 2 and uh, or beta 1 beta 2 and then they're saying that they diffuse away what is diffusion diffusion is this that from a higher concentration the molecules go to a, uh, to the place where there is low concentration right so they're saying and then they could uh, be reuptaken as well and then um, you see see and then they are saying by active uptake active uptake means that they are needing energy and then they are uptaken up okay and then they are stored into the vesicle all right and then uh, they are destroyed some are destroyed intra neuron and then some are destroyed outside the neuron right so this is what they talked about then is epinephrine epinephrine is also the same thing okay epinephrine activates beta 1 beta 2 and alpha adrenal receptors epinephrine ad administration in humans increase systolic pressure as a result of positive inotropic and chronotropic effects on the heart and generally results in decreased total peripheral resistance and decreased diastolic pressure due to vasodilation in the vascular bed of skeletal muscle that overcomes the vasoconstriction produced in most other 
vascular beds including the kidney which is by the alpha receptor activation the mean arterial pressure may increase slightly decrease or remain unchanged depending on the balance of affects on systolic and diastolic blood pressure um first of all tell me what is systolic systolic means contraction okay yeah systolic means contraction okay so you see when we are say and di diastolic means that relaxation is there and here it's filling up okay so and if you remember when we discussed in my previous lecture the location of beta receptors and everything so we discussed that this beta receptors are present on the heart remember okay and what were they doing they were doing tachycardia and everything like that right okay so you see if epinephrine administration is there so it would increase the systolic pressure systolic pressure means uh it would increase the contraction right that is why if somebody's heart stops so you have seen that um they have this syringe and then they put it in the heart and then they pump it in so what is that that is that is epinephrine right so the heart beats more heart starts right so this is that and generally results in decreased total peripheral resistance okay resistance is what resistance is something diminishes something right peripheral means away from the main body okay and decreased diastolic pressure due to vasodilation in the vascular bed of the skeletal muscles right so you see vas peripheral resistance is decreased and um vasodilation happens right it means towards the skeletal muscles the blood circulation would enhance and towards the main body the circulation would diminish a bit right so that's how the effects would be produced clear okay at high doses epinephrine causes vasoconstriction in the vascular bed of uh, uh, skeletal muscles epinephrine increases coronary blood flow as a result of increased cardiac workload it may precipitate angina in patients uh with coronary insufficiency epinephrine increases the drainage of aqueous humor and reduces pressure in open angle glaucoma it dilates pupils by contraction of radial muscle of eye since i don't have time and i've already explained this to you so i'm not going through it okay all right if you want to understand it uh, you can ask me later on in the google classroom or you can go to these uh, lectures which i have already recorded and uploaded on the youtube okay now epinephrine relaxes bronchial smooth muscles right and if you remember the bronchial smooth muscles when they were relaxing so how exactly the air passage was opening up and everything right okay then the last slide norepinephrine is rarely used therapeutically it activates beta 1 receptor and alpha receptor it has little activity at beta 2 receptors now guys we will continue with this slide i want you all to log out and log in back okay thank you